Today, we're going to talk about bottlenecking. Yo, Jay, the Define R6 in white. What do you think? Define R6 in white. Okay, okay, it's an R6, but it's not new. In fact, it's not even all white. I mean, what's with the black front? Really? Coming from the guy with the black and white car, black hood, black sport. Okay, that's different. It's the same. That's not the same. It's the exact same thing. Not the same. Fine, change it then. How? With the custom wrapper and slick wraps, front panel, whole case, whatever you want, even custom designs. That's, that's right, we did do that video about the custom wrapped R6. Choose any of their existing designs or customize your own, upload it, and they'll make it for you. See? Wow, you really can make things custom with wraps. Today we're going to talk specifically about bottlenecking, a topic we haven't really covered on this channel in quite a long time. In my opinion and my reason behind that not being as much of an issue as it used to be is the competition that's taken place in the CPU space since AMD launched Ryzen has caused CPU manufacturers, namely Intel, to really have to catch up in terms of what AMD is offering. We're talking about overclockable CPUs, more cores, more threads, games have started becoming more multi-threading uh, friendly which means that the CPU itself has been less of an issue as it was back in like the early 2010s when FX was still the deal. Uh, four core, eight thread was the max you could get on mainstream. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and show you kind of an extreme example of what bottlenecking really looks like. And then we're gonna kind of like tune it out basically to kind of show you where that sweet spot really is. Now you can actually try this at home with your own CPU if you guys want to, if you're running an Intel based CPU anyway. I don't know if AMD has as useful of a tool, but this is actually the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or XTU. You can download this, it's free. And if you have an overclocking CPU, it'll let you do anything that you want to it pretty much. And then if you don't, I don't know what settings will allow you to do. I think you can play with the ratio and bring it down. I just don't think you can overclock. Um, but anyway, this is an 8700K that what we've done so far as you can see, we have two active cores because we turned it into basically a 7100. Now, yes, I know the cache values are different. Yes, I know the uh, cache frequency and all that stuff is different. This is not intended to be like, here's how performance is on a 7100 and an 8100 and an 83. Well, that's not what we're doing today. We're showing you examples of what bottlenecking looks like in a real case scenario with a real game and stuff. So what we're doing is we're obviously starting on the very opposite end of the spectrum, as bottlenecked as we think we can get, to show you what it looks like in its definitive form with a 2080 Ti on our test bench. So obviously you should never pair a 7100 to a 2080 Ti. That's guaranteed to bottleneck, which is exactly what we're doing here today. So this is just kind of our, our extreme test right here. So we're also gonna have MSI Afterburner open. We are gonna be running a slight overclock on our graphics card, because again, we're trying to get these two as far away from each other as possible. And then we're gonna be actually using um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider because it has really good tools built into their benchmark to show us things like uh, frame timing, CPU timing, uh, lots of different, it even show us what percentage of GPU bound we are. So obviously you see CPU one, two, three, four here because again, two cores, uh, four threads because we have hyper-threading enabled. We also have our settings set to highest right now, which is kind of unfair for this test a little bit because of the fact that if we really wanted to see a, a CPU bound test where we're bottlenecking, we'd want to have less post-processing filters going and higher, for higher frame rates, which would push our CPU even harder. But for the sake of this test, we are just leaving everything maxed. We can see right now with the test running, look, bouncing between 95 and 100% utilization on the CPU. And because of that, our GPU utilization is extremely low. Even in 1080p, our FPS is only sitting in the 50s with a 2080 Ti. You can see we hit 100 on all of them for a second there. But our GPU is spending a lot of time just waiting for the CPU. And that's indicative by these high spikes where suddenly the FPS will climb a little bit and then come back down. But you can kind of see a median line sort of drawn through the middle. We're starting to you know, dip right there down to the 40s, obviously. As we dip, so does our frames per, or our GPU utilization. All right, so as you can see right here, it's not fully rendered, because watch this, it's got some flickering there, and then we're gonna see a big pop of the mountain come in. There it is, there's the rest of the scene. So that's an example of one thing that happens uh, with an under-spec CPU versus the game's minimum specs, uh, which is clearly not a good thing, seeing that popping in like that. But once again, look at our, our GPU util, it's all the way down to the 30s. Our core clock has even suffered because obviously it's not gonna ramp up the core clock if it's not even being utilized. So this scene is only being 
rendered with 1350 megahertz with the GPU because the CPU is absolutely 100% pegged. So the reason why we use this particular benchmark for this video is because you can see we get a lot of information including a graph. So this is our, our GPU graph, our GPU CPU relative graph here. So as you can see, the CPU has taken much longer to do things than the GPU is. But if this orange line was above the green line, this could be an instance of where you have a very fast CPU with a very slow GPU, where the GPU is then what the CPU is waiting on to be able to get the next, scene, the next frame ready. So we can see right here we're GPU bound 0%, and that's, uh, that's kind of a problem. So. We obviously saw too that our CPU was pretty much maxed out during that test. So here's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna change uh, the CPU now to, from theoretically a 7100 to an 8100, which means now we're gonna get rid of hyperthreading. We're gonna enable two more cores. We have four physical cores, but instead of having it running at 3.9, which is the max uh, speed for these chips, because remember they have, no they have no turbo clock on those models, we're gonna reduce it down to 3.6, because that's what the 8100 is. All right, so test two, we have it running at uh, 3600 megahertz or 3.6 gigahertz with four active cores, no hyperthreading, and our cache ratio is set to match. So we're gonna run the exact same test, all the same settings as you can see here, the graphics are all set to highest. Um, same sort of thing in the menu though, but you'll notice instead of pegging up in the 90s, we go down into the 70s for a little bit. So what we're gonna look at initially when we start this test is what happens on the initial utilization of the graphics card as well as the CPU. All right, so on the initial test, we are sitting in the 90s, obviously still, one core hit at 100, that 100's gonna bounce around, but our utilization came up significantly. Remember, it was sitting in the 50s initially and then dropped down to the 30s. Well, now we hit the 60s and are dropped down into the 40s in terms of utilization on the GPU. Still seeing 100% though on the cores bouncing around, so obviously we are still seeing uh, the CPU cause a bottleneck to our GPU because we want this number to be at least 85 to 90 percent or higher. If we see this go up into the 90s and we know the GPU is now what we're bound by because the GPU is being utilized to its, you know, its full capacity or full potential, but if this number is sitting this low, that is what a bottleneck is and that's what we're trying to avoid. So by doing nothing more than switching from hyperthreading to four physical cores, emulating an uh, i7 80 or an i3 8100. Wow, an i7 8100 would be that would be an interesting CPU. But I digress. We've gone up from 72 to 88, and as you can see right here, GPU bound is still zero percent, but we're get, we got close. But what you're going to notice is both charts as a whole moved down because of the timing it took, because these are mil measured in milliseconds. This is the time for it to do the task. And as you can see, everything just slid down on that chart. So that's obviously an improvement, but we still are clearly gonna be bottlenecked. Although in the menu, we went from 70-ish, 78% to like 93, which is crazy, because the menu does indeed render the game in the background. So what we're gonna do now is I wanna see what happens now if we just give it a crap ton of core speed. So we're gonna overclock this to 5.2 gigahertz and we're gonna see what happens to that FPS by having the same core count, the same cache, the same uh, number of threads obviously, and the same CPU settings, the same or the same GPU settings, we still have the same overclock going on our 2080 Ti and see how much more we gained by overclocking. So here's what we did. We overclocked it to 5.2 gigahertz with a 50 uh, ratio on the cache. That's not something that exists. It's not something that you can even try to do with your own 8100 because remember it's a locked CPU. So that's why we use CPUs like the 8700K and the 9900K to do our emulation or emulating of other CPUs because we can take it and dial it to where we want to see what theoretical you know, performance is like at different frequencies that you couldn't otherwise do by just popping in an 8100. So although the cache amount is a little bit different, I don't believe that is enough difference between the CPUs to invalidate our test. Like I said at the start though, this is all theoretical to show you what bottlenecking looks like. It's not meant to be an exact representation of the CPU that we're trying to emulate. So it dropped down into the 50s and 60s at the start here. It did start at about 70, went up to 81, and then came down as this test is happening. But look, we're seeing a lot less of the 100 pegged. There's one. Um, it's still pretty high, obviously, and still clearly bottlenecked, even running at 5.2 gigahertz on this one test. You can tell too, the GPU, look how cool it's running. Check this out. So we went to GPU bound 2%, which is right down here where I said it was gonna potentially happen. Um, again, everything moved down because the max chart before was 30 milliseconds, now it's 20. So you can see things are getting faster, specifically because of the CPU, but we went up from 88 to 105 on our average frames per second. And then you can compare obviously down here on the bottom with the min max and all that was, but the, it really did improve obviously, but we are still clearly overall bottlenecking our GPU. So the issue here is that if you were running something like a 2080 Ti, 
and put it on a CPU like this, then there's a whole lot of performance that you paid for that you're not getting. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and unlock the CPU and go normal 8700K at five gigahertz, and we're gonna see theoretically what the performance looks like, what the GPU bound looks like with not introducing any sort of a bottleneck at all. And what you're gonna see right now is that our CPU utilization is gonna stay fairly low, but our GPU should jump up into the 90s. Oh, it dropped down to 80, I guess now we're bottlenecking. But, you know, look at our CPU. It's not. So it's possible too that this engine is just not using an entire 2080 Ti in terms of utilization, but this is still considered a good util because our CPU, as you can see, is not pegging on any of the cores. One of the reasons why we're not actually doing like a 1440p or 4K test is because um, I, if we're talking about bottlenecking and those that are running low-end CPUs, I think it's extremely rare that you're gonna find someone running a 7100 or an 8100 with a 4K panel, possibly a 1440, but if you guys want us to do another video where we test very similar type deals and see how resolution affects various CPU speeds, then make sure you guys comment down below that you want us to make that video and we'll do it. Or better yet, give this one a like too. And our average went up to 121 FPS. So we gained, uh, what, from 105 to 121 by unlocking, you know, all, obviously all of our cores. So I bet you anything, if we ran a 9900K or another CPU with more threads, we'd probably see even higher FPS with the same GPU. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna pop in a 1660, which is a much more mid-range graphics card with the same low-end CPUs, and we're gonna see exactly how it compared. But we're gonna spare you guys going through all the tests. We're just gonna show you all the charts at the end. All right, here we go. 99% GPU bound with the 1660 on the fully unlocked 8700K overclocked. But you can tell that we're GPU bound because if you look right here in our frame uh, rendering times, you can see that our GPU is higher than the CPU on everything. So the CPU was like, hey, here's your frame, do what you need to do to it, and we're ready for the next one. Come on, are you ready for us? So the CPU was literally waiting on the GPU, which is 100% non-bottlenecked in this case. So as you saw, the 2080 Ti is obviously a bad pairing for low-end CPUs because there's a lot of performance you'd be paying for in here that you're not necessarily getting, at least with this one title. I mean, there's, there's so many different variations that we could have done. We could have chosen any CPU, whether it be Ryzen or Intel, any particular game title, and the results would be different because it's impossible to have any test scenario account for all the different you know, combinations that there would be out there. So this is just an example of what bottlenecking sort of looks like. But obviously with the hypothetical CPUs we had set up, uh, there was a lot of fluctuation in FPS swinging all over the place with the 2080 Ti, giving us terrible 0.1 and 1% lows, which is why you see a lot of reviewers use those figures because average is only one piece of the puzzle. Uh, and then obviously if 0.1 and 1% lows are really low versus your average, then you're gonna see huge stutters, which we were seeing with this. That's why with the 1660, we saw a very, very tight line across the board, even all the way down to the 7100. And I was surprised that we were only 63% GPU bound with the 1660. I thought it was gonna be a lot higher, which goes to show that the CPU race over the last several years has definitely made a CPU experience for gamers a whole lot better in terms of bottlenecking because you have to try pretty hard. That's because of the five gigahertz becoming much more common. The thread count on CPUs, especially on mainstream and the lower end stuff has definitely gotten more inclusive to include you know four, six, eight uh, cores plus hyper threading or SMT depending on which um, platform you're running, you're definitely benefiting from that race. One other thing that worth pointing out though too, is if you were running a 60 hertz panel with V-Sync or G-Sync on, like this is a G-Sync uh, 60 hertz panel, if we had G-Sync turned on with in V-Sync, we would have gotten exactly the same performance between both of these cards because the 1660, even with the 7100, achieved above 60 FPS on an average. So there you go. One other thing worth pointing out too though, is that these settings were on max. And so if we had reduced any of the post-processing quality, we would have introduced an even bigger bottleneck. But I didn't do that today because I wanted to just sort of max out the game as a sort of a baseline test and then see how things went from there. Because I think most people want to shoot for the most eye candy that they can. And so we just use that as our baseline. But it's worth noting, if we had gone to like a medium setting, we would have seen even lower GPU utilization and even in higher CPU bottleneck. But if you guys want us to do more tests like this in the future, please sound off in the comments below. This is a direct response to some of the comments I saw on our, our budget PCs actually worth it video, and this is that response. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. We realized that face swapping Brian's face onto my youngest daughter looks like Stephen Burke from Gamers Nexus. 
2000 Ti. 20, 20, 2000. 2000. 2000. 2000. Nice. NVIDIA's next big thing right there. Look how many more Rams were friendered though. Uh, Rams were friendered. Rams were friendered. <laughs>